Hey guys, Steve here from Blossom Racing. Got another video coming at you. Today we're going to do the 42 millimeter carburetors. <clears throat> so let's get right into it. So this is the 42 millimeter carburetor and this is what they look like when they come stock uh, right from the factory. Um, so I'm just going to run around this carburetor and just kind of talk to you about uh, some little tricks here and there. Um, we're going to start off with the flex cord. Um, a lot of people ask us um, about the flex cord. Can I remove it? Can I leave it in there? If you remove this flex cord, you now create a vacuum leak into the carburetor. So you cannot remove it unless you plug that hole. <clears throat> but I wouldn't remove this. Uh, the reason why I wouldn't remove this is because most of the carburetors uh, out there today, um, we are putting a carb top where you have your idle adjustment right here on the top of the carburetor. So what that does is eliminate having to use your flex cord because the flex cord is basically just your idle adjustment it has a little pin that pushes the slide up and down. So the recommendation on this uh, flex cord is to uh, put your carburetor on your car, fire the thing up, um, get it running. Uh, uh, do not use the top idle adjuster at first. Take your flex cord and turn it in until you get your RPMs, uh, maybe three, 400 RPMs lower than what you normally idle at. So if you normally idle at 4,000 RPMs, set your flex cord RPM at 37, 3,800 RPMs. And what that does is that if your top idle adjuster ever breaks, because right here, your idle cam, right where your, your idle adjuster screw pushes on, sometimes that will break off. If that breaks off, your RPM is going to drop unless you have your flex cord set at a couple hundred RPMs less. And if that happens, you still have the opportunity to reach down here, grab the flex cord, and turn it back up to your 4,000 RPMs, and, and, and you won't miss out on that run. Okay, so that's the flex cord. <clears throat> this right here, this is just a overflow. Uh, what this overflow indicates, if you have fuel pouring out of this one, that's going to indicate that your needle and seat is bad and needs to be cleaned or replaced. <clears throat> um, right next to the overflow, you have the uh, air mixture screw. Um, so you're regulating air, so screwing it in, the carburetor is going to get fatter. Screwing it out, it's going to get leaner. This basically um, affects your low idle circuit. Um, back on the uh, back side of the carburetor, you got a couple holes here. This hole is uh, for your air mixture screw. Uh, that's where the air comes in and out. Usually these carburetors, so the 42 millimeter carburetor is a non-bleed carburetor. What that means is none of these air jets or plugs in the back of these carburetors work unless somebody takes the emulsion tube or the needle tube out and cross drills it. Then that's functional. But normally from stock, they are not functional. They are a non-bleed carburetor. So if I was to take that plug out or in, either way, <clears throat> it wouldn't change the carburetor effect it anyway, okay? Um, rolling over to this side of the carburetor, um, nothing too much on this side that you'd need to be uh, very aware of. <clears throat> back side of the carburetor. So there's two vent areas on the back side of the 42 carburetor. You got the one that comes off on a 90 and goes straight up. You have to take and tap that and put a plug in it. We put a set screw in it. 
Now you have this little black boot over here. <clears throat> this little black boot you have to be really careful about because sometimes this will get a cut in it or a nick in it. And if that happens, you will get an air leak right there. Um, so what you may want to do is just pull this black cap off and then you'll have a little uh, brass nipple sticking out. You tap that uh, little nipple and then put a set screw in it and then you can put this black thing on back on or you can leave it off, it doesn't matter either way. At least in that way you ensure that if this cap ever cracks, it will not uh, cause you a vacuum leak, okay? Um, that's pretty much the outside of the carburetor, um, but I'll talk about putting a 42 uh, carb top on it really quick. The few things that you have to do, um, as you can see from here, you have to take the uh, cable holder, the stock cable holder off. You just pull this screw out, take it off, and then put the screw back in, that, and that eliminates that. Take the top off, uh, replace it with a billet top, and then you have your idle adjustment is, is uh, all on top. And then uh, back here, you have a little stud that sticks out, and then you have a little dog bone that connects to the two bolt flange on your intake manifold. And what that ensures is that your carburetor is not gonna fall off your car and bounce down the track as they, uh, lots of them have done that. So, <clears throat> okay, so we're just gonna get into the carburetor really quick. So we've already determined we got the air mixture screw on the outside of the carburetor, which controls your low idle circuit. Um, we're gonna take the bowl off and dig into the jets and talk about those really quick. So let me grab my tools and I'll show you some more tricks and tips. Um, if you get in here and you're trying to get these screws off and they're just way too tight and, and you start messing them up, there is a trick. All you do is set the carburetor down on, the, on a table uh, on something flat so that there's nothing that you're gonna break. And what I mean by break is you're going to take a hammer, you're going to have your uh, screwdriver in the in your thing, in your screw, and you just tap it like that and it jars uh, that screw enough and then it just backs out really easy, okay? Um, I'm going to grab the screw gun and jump in there so I can do this a little bit quicker for you guys. So we're going to pop all four off. And just be aware that these do have an accelerator pump and spring in them. So if you let the uh, bowl come off, it's very likely that the spring and uh, pump may go flying across the room and you will lose them forever. So here is your accelerator pump and spring. It's pretty simple. You got the spring and you got the pump. Um, the pump has a male end and a female end. Uh, the spring goes into the female end. Um, so you just kind of push it in there and it's in there. And then the spring goes right down in, just like that. Now, <clears throat> this little tube that comes up, all that is is an overflow for your bowl. Um, if that drips, that does not mean that your needle and seat is bad only if your overflow tube has fuel coming out it doesn't mean that your needle and seat's bad so this tube is just an overflow for the bowl um, there's if you don't want this to drip because your fuel's in here bouncing around vibrating it's going to go in that tube and it's going to drip if you have this tube down so a couple ways to fix that to remedy that situation is you take that tube and you just zip tie it to the side of the carburetor, get it up higher than the bowl. <clears throat> the second way of doing it is jump in your vise and just pinch the very end of that, which I'm gonna do that really quick. Just to show you, you just have to pinch just the end of it. 
And if you look, it's, uh, it's all pinched down, so fuel's not gonna run out that, it's not gonna drip. So now if I really don't wanna even run this tube, I could take this tube and just get rid of it, okay? Now, let's get into the internals. So, <clears throat> here is the pilot jet. This jet controls your low idle circuit. Here is your main jet. And this, of course, controls full throttle, uh, down track, um, let's get to it. So that's what that is. All right. Um, so let's get into changing the needle and seat on this thing. Uh, the 42s is, is really simple compared to the 28s and, and 33s. You don't have to worry about breaking towers off, uh, driving out the pin. This one's really easy. Uh, it's just got the screw right here. Just loosen that up. You don't have to take it all the way out. Just loosen it up. Pick your float up. Slide your pin to the side. And it pulls right out with your needle and seat. So there's your, there's your needle. Um, your float. You got that out. Um, now we're just going to remove the seat out of here. Take that screw all the way out. Grab a pair of little pliers, grab onto the side of it, and she pulls right out. Okay, so there's the needle and seat. Easy to replace, just slide your new one in. Grab your little screw that you had. Put that right back in. Hook your needle back onto your floats. Slide that back in. And tighten the screw down. And then a lot of questions that we get is, how do you set the floats on these things? Well, let me explain how we do it. Uh, you take a little regular head screwdriver uh, this is uh, what you're going to use to bend the tab if you need to. So what I'm going to do is the bottom of the carburetor, this area right here, all I'm going to do is make that parallel to the arm that holds onto the float. So if you hold it away and look at it, it is parallel right there, resting free, no, no pressure up, no pulling down, anything like that. Um, you know, let me, uh, adjust that just a little bit and you can see, um, you know, we got a little bounce there, um, and we are flat even with, uh, the bottom of the carburetor. So that's basically how you do that part. Uh, the emulsion tube or the needle tube, um, I'll show you really quick how to take that out. Uh, just take your, uh, 5 sixteenths wrench. Get down onto the uh, main jet adapter, pull that out. Usually you can flip them over, shake it a little bit, and they'll come out. If they don't, really simple. I got a 632 tap here. I'm gonna put my thumb on the idle cam. I'm gonna floor it all the way down, and all I'm doing is getting that needle that's sticking out out of the way. You put, the, put your tap in there, kind of cock it to the side just a little bit and pull your emulsion tube right out. Now, this carburetor being a non-bleed carburetor, this is the part right here, your needle jet, that determines whether or not your air jet on the back side of your carburetor works. So, as you can see, I'll roll this around there are no holes anywhere on this emulsion tube. If you take and drill cross hatch drill uh, holes into this emulsion tube, it will now make that air jet in the back of the carburetor function. Okay? So we'll get the emulsion tube back down in. Sometimes it doesn't want to get put go down in all the way, so I'll just uh, push it down in, wiggle it around, 
putting the um, main jet holder back on. You want to be a little careful putting this back in. You don't want to over tighten it. Just a little snug um, is all you want to do. I've done it before where um, I pushed it way too hard and actually broke the inside of the carburetor apart. A little piece of aluminum actually broke out and I had to weld it up to repair it. So, so that's basically uh, your 42 millimeter carburetor. They're, they're really pretty simple carburetors, but they have a lot to them. Um, we'll put the bowl back on. Just make sure that your accelerator pump and springs in there. Um, if you run them, a lot of people do not run them. Typically, the accelerator pump over time is going to corrode and then it's not even going to function and you probably won't even notice the difference. Uh, sometimes you can notice it uh, depending on how you have your carburetor tuned. If you have it tuned really close um, to either being really fat or really lean, if you're one way or the other, and the accelerator pump quits working on you and you're really lean, right? Now you're gonna be super lean, so then you would probably notice it. But if you're if you're in the middle of, of the beginning and the end, left and right, if you're in the middle of it, when that accelerator pump quits working, you probably won't even notice it. So make sure the O-ring, float bolt O-rings all back in there. It's sitting down correctly. Uh, set your float bowl back on the carburetor and get your screws all back in. Grab your screw gun and zap them back in. And there you have it, we are all back together. So that is the skinny here on the 42 millimeter carburetor. Hopefully that uh, gave you more answers than it did questions. And uh, stay tuned for more videos in the future. Thanks guys for uh, visiting my page. Like and uh, subscribe to our page. Thanks a lot, have a great day guys.